Okay. Don, it's just you now. You're unmuted. Okay, this is Don W6GPS from Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I do want to welcome all of you to our informal how-to uh, program, a THD75. Uh, this is going to be a first for me. Um, I have my good friend, uh, Kevin, KI4LAX. He's on the other side of Chattanooga. Uh, John is our uh, kind of our moderator host. Uh, at this time, uh, I do want to announce uh, 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 sad news, the passing of Bob Heil, uh, K9EID, who is the uh, um, founding uh, owner of Heil Microphones. Uh, he was a fantastic audio engineer back in uh, the rock band days, the Eagles, and just uh, just a whole plethora of things. And I just want to recognize uh, in a, just a, a moment of silence, just for a moment, that... Uh, we recognize uh, Bob Heil as a silent key. This happened, I believe, uh, last Thursday. Okay, so we're going to kind of treat this like an like a net. We're going to be opening up for questions. Um, I I do have um, chat enabled, so if there is a question there, uh, be sure to um, ask a question. Um, I'm kind of. Um, this is kind of the first thing, first uh, time for me to do something like this of this scale. Uh, with a, I've got me a, a switcher here. I can go to my com my Windows computer. Uh, I can go to the tabletop that we can uh, do a demonstration. And then I have a still here of the radio. So um, I guess... Uh, I guess what I would ask is... Uh, first of all, I do not work for Kenwood. I'm not an employee of Kenwood. I'm an avid fan of Kenwood. Uh, back in the days of AVMAP and APRS, uh, big time, um, I did a lot uh, to demonstrate the Kenwood APRS radios, and they let me have booth space. So that's where that relationship has been for the last uh, probably 25, 30 years. Also, Phil uh, N4DRO is is like a brother to me. So we, me and Kevin, we are not employees. We do not get paid. Uh, we get to maybe a bed and, a, uh, and free food at a ham fest. So, um, I guess, um, I guess I would ask, um, uh, if you have a 74, you probably have got half the task of, of, uh, learning a new radio, uh, the, um, the, excuse me, let's get the right one here. You know, the, the THD 75 is um, a pretty remarkable piece of equipment. I got one of the first ones of the 74s back in 2016. I didn't have a manual and I, I plunked around, plunked around, plunked around. And so I'm just gonna take this time right here just to kind of familiarize you uh, with, a, with a radio, familiarize you with a radio and to um, just just point out a few things here. Uh, first of all, the um, the seventy five is is a much more robust case. Uh, I've done some tests on it. Um, the there's two sets of menus here. Uh, if you hit the function button, there's a a blue set of a blue set of menus and a white set. The white set are primary. In other words, those they're primary functions that you can uh, go to. And by hitting the function key, they're secondary menus. Um, the other thing is the other thing is is the um, band A and band B. The differences. So band. If you have select, let's see if I get, I'm going to get me a little a little pointer here. Uh, right here, whatever band you choose is where the push to talk is, that little PTT. You see the little PTT is moved down to the, down here to the middle. Okay, the B band is the band that you could change to the different modes. So there's a, there's a um, side band, there's upper side band, lower side band, CW, FM, and uh, digital. So the B band, 
does all those things. The A band only does digital and FM. So that's one thing. Make sure that you have know that wherever the push to talk button is. B band, your weather stations down there and uh, other functions. So get out of that. And then your A band, did I say that correctly? This B band I meant. The A band will be the one that'll have your uh, terminal mode. It has to be up in that band. And I'm gonna change on that one. So that keeps changing on me. And then, uh, so what'll happen sometimes, I'll just mention this, is you'll get different things using the same resource. So if you're doing APRs on your B band and you put weather alert on, just realize it won't beacon. So I, it's one thing you might just remember that a lot of this radio does so much. And so that you wind up using multiple things using the same resource. But the AB button basically just swaps you back and forth. So um, where do you want to go from there? All right. Uh, go ahead and put me back. Am I back on? Yeah, you were back on. Okay. So that's that's kind of the, the quick uh, tour of the buttons. Uh, on the side of the radio, uh, of course, push to talk or push to talk microphone, headphone. Um, this is where the SD card goes. Then it's a USB C. Uh, and then there is um, 12 volts in on the side right there. So you could take a 12 volt power supply that has two amps of power. And then I plug that in there right like so. I do it all the time. I haven't had any problems. You can charge on USB C and you could charge at 12 volts, just not at the same time. Um, squelch, squelch button is right here on the side. Um, on off button. There is also a, if you have voice guidance turned on, you could do a, a quick push in. And then uh, you'll get uh, you'll get uh, voice guidance uh, call back what's on the screen. Um, so that's kind of the that's kind of the um, quick introduction to the radio. So um, anyway, so what I want to do now, first of all, it, oh, just unmute everybody, John, if there's a quick question of what I've talked about. And try everybody, everybody try not to jump on each other. Is there something just about the ergonomics of the radio or the buttons um, real quick? Uh, I'm asking all to unmute. So yes, you can, I, I did that. Go ahead. Okay. Anybody have a question about that? Uh, I do want to mention this is the multi-function um, uh, toggle right here. And this is how you can get to uh, your different repeaters, a repeater list, nearby repeaters. We had a question about that. Uh, this is just D star repeaters. So if you hit enter, uh, it's searching by GPS reference uh, to Chattanooga right here. Probably not going to be able to talk on that because uh, I'm just in the basement. So by holding this down, you ha you do have to be in the DR mode, and uh, people get confused about the DR mode. Think of DR mode as you're using a repeater or a hotspot. You're transmitting uh, RPT one, and then RPT two. You're going in on RPT two, RPT one, and then RPT two out. Think of it as a repeater. DV is just simplex. Just think of it as a simplex. Um, there's a thing here, a quick key. If you quick key this, um, like so, a quick key is kind of like an escape command. So anybody got a question, just a quick question about that part of the radio? Yeah, where's the quick key? Okay, the quick key is the push to talk. Oh, okay. All right, push to talk and... Uh, uh, all you if if you're stuck in something, all you have to do is just do a quick key, and it, it'll go back to the to the VFOs. Okay, good. Thank you. 
Okay. Flesh. Go Flesh. ahead. What does the voice sound like on this thing? The maybe, voice? Maybe later on you can go to the voice and see how it sounds on this thing. Yeah. How clear is it and the whole ball of wax? Yeah. Hey, Kevin, once you turn, once you go ahead and turn turn yours on while we'll get yours ready, we're gonna get just to turn on voice guidance and we'll let you uh take a take a thrill at it. Uh, another thing is you have memory you have uh, menus by toggling by toggling uh, the the multi to multi function toggle switch, or you can actually enter memories or enter uh, menus by pushing uh, menu and like five hundred, and so that went right to where my call sign is for my for my APRS. So if you have a set of memories or sorry set of menus. Okay, so if you have a set of menus that you memorize the favorite ones, you don't have to use the multifunction to toggle around. All right, uh, Kevin, just give me a little demonstration of the voice guidance, okay? Okay. Um, basically, voice guidance is going to be down under audio. And I haven't played with these too much, but they had two different ones. I'm going to go with the auto one. Hang on, Chris. Which Chris? Which one's the better one in your opinion? Okay, let me get out of that. Uh, Chris is muted. Yeah. Hey, Chris, unmute, unmute yourself, buddy. This is W zero U H. Yeah. The. Uh, Auto is uh, the auto two is uh, where it will read the uh, the name of your uh, memory, say uh, W zero N H repeater or something. Say you okay. named it. Auto two uh, auto two will read the name. Auto one just reads the uh, frequencies. Right, but it's the same voice. And then to if you want to start up when you get your radio out of the box, you hold down the pound the uh, pound key. And then press the power key and yep. and hold that down until it, and it'll beep and then it'll start talking. Okay, now I didn't know that. Yeah, that's just like the seventy four. Yeah, it's just like the seventy four, exactly like it. Can can you repeat that? Sure. What okay. you're going to do is you're going to hold down the pound key. And okay, then... I'm going to I'm going to demonstrate that. Hold down the pound key, right? All right. Now you're going to. Hold down your power key to turn on your radio. You're going to turn the radio on, so you're going to hold down the pound key first, and now hold down your power key. And then it'll beep, and then you'll then you'll hear there it. There you talk. go. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay, and then if you if you push the um, power off key, it's two steps. So if you do a quick key on the power. DR two local CQ from repeater whiskey six go. So now to turn it off, Sierra, you just hold it brother, in and it'll go off. Yeah, you just press and hold it longer to. Yeah, just press and hold it, it and it'll. Yep. Uh, on the pound sign? No. On the power, no, no, the on power, your power button. To turn it off, you just hold on your power, you just hold it in and it'll shut off. Okay. Just like normal. Next okay. question. Uh, Battery, yeah. if, you, low, if you turn L, that, VFL, if you low, turn that low, power low. back on, will the voice come back on? Yes. Or yeah, the voice stays on. Yes. Always, or you, yes. Always, you don't always have to hit that pound key. No, 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 no. No. Okay. So if you want to turn it off, then you have to go into a five uh, hit menu and then go to five sixteen. I think it is. Or five, no, no, nine sixteen. Five, nine sixteen. I meant nine. Or nine something. I was. Yeah. Yeah. You hit nine sixteen and it'll go. Right, yeah. and then you can select off. Yeah, we got that right there. Okay, yeah. thank you. That see, I learned something. I learned something. I never knew that. So and nine and nine eighteen speeds up the uh, speeds up the voice. Okay, without making right. it sound without making it sound chip monkey. Chip monkey. Or All right, whatever so, you call that. Do we have a quick question before I go about transferring your seventy four? repeaters to the 75 software.
I'll take that as a no. Unmute everybody there, Johnny. I think everybody's on, uh, unmuted. on board. Okay. Let me. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. So here's what we're going to do now. And hopefully uh, I won't have egg on my face, but we're going to everybody see my screen right there, except for. I my, hear you. Okay. I hear you. <laughs> All right. So um, for my blind folks, um, you just have to trust me. But what okay. we've done. What we've done is uh, is I've opened up a instance of the D74 program. I've got uh, Kevin's file because he's got all sorts of memory channels in there. And then on the that's on the left hand side of my screen. And then on the right hand side of my screen, uh, I'm going to uh, merge. I'm going to copy and put everything. This is the only thing that you could transfer from the 74 programming software to the 75 programming software. So what you do is on the upper uh, number 000, zero, zero there, the, um, if you touch that and do a We lost your voice. He got muted. Hey, Don, you might have to click the unmute button. Okay. There you are. All right, so where, where do I have to start over? Uh, we good? the first uh, row and go from there. Okay, so what I've done is, what I've done is on the left-hand side, I got a 74 instance. I got a copy of uh, Kevin's file. And all you do is on 001, uh, put, the, put the mouse uh, on the empty, uh, column to the left of the triple zero, do a control A, highlights everything, do a control C, and then move your uh, mouse over to the D75 instance. We have everything in the copy buffer. We highlight uh, to the left of triple zero and do a control V, and then there you go. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, everybody. All right, let me get everyone. They got, they got questions. Okay, hold on. I have to mute all and then unmute all, so bear with me. Uh, uh, what do you hit to uh, paste it? Bear with me a second, guys. Hang on. Okay, so what you do is on the 74 instance, you do it, you click on uh, the empty space to the left of triple zero, you do a control A, which highlights everything, then do a control C, everything's loaded into a copy buffer, move your mouse over to the 75 instance, and then to the left of the uh, triple zero, you put a control Victor, control Victor. Victor uh, Kevin, okay. Kevin, just uh, hop, unmute Kevin. He's unmuted. He's still, yeah, Kevin. Yeah, I'm there, go. I got it. Okay, so it's just simple Windows commands. Yes, control V would be paste, what you're trying to do. Yeah. Okay, so now, now what we're gonna do is we don't need the we don't need the instance of the seventy four, so we're just gonna we're just gonna close that. Would you want to exit the software and you say yes? Now here's where we're going to build a file. So the first thing I would do is to uh, save as just because you want to save this uh, this file with all the uh, repeater lists. And I know that there's people that have hundreds and hundreds of things in there, so I'm going to call it. Uh, W6 GPS uh, MIM channels. Just call it. Okay. So you, you'll do a save. And now the file is still open. Now we're going to go down. We're going to go down and we're going to program some of these things. And Kevin, if you could just follow in the manual the what what uh, number, what number 
yeah. um, what number uh, menu that we're that I'm dealing with. Okay, so we got the the men, the memory channels program scan memory. I'm just going to pass that a call channel. So if you want to have something other than five two, you can go ahead and program that uh, steps things like that. Now uh, all all of a sudden, I think you guys are going to be thinking about. Uh, uh, hot spots. We're going to get to that. All right. Uh, weather channel. Uh, there's the weather channels uh, for us in the U.S. Uh, VFO. Basically, you could change the uh, you could change the way the the VFOs are configured. Maybe you want two of them, uh, or maybe you got a two twenty. You want one to be two twenty. Okay. So repeater list. The repeater list, uh, this one is 210. 210. That repeater list, uh, I do not have uh, because we have not imported it. So um, back to back, back to our 74, if you save the repeater list, it's a TSV file. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to go in here and uh, import a repeater list. I know I, I have one. On my desktop, it'll be like Kenwood, KWD. I hit that. I open it up. It's going to ask me what uh, market I'm in. So your Europeans, you could choose uh, the E uh, defaults to A, and then uh, uh, there's the uh, J type for Japan. So I hit OK, and now now we have all the D star repeaters in there. Remember, we've started a new file without any. Uh, D star repeaters. So you, the, the repeater file is the same format on the 74. Okay. Everybody got that? All right. So call sign list. What number is that one, Kevin? Call sign list is 220. Okay. So 220. So let's say if you got some favorite, uh, favorite call signs, uh, you could put those uh, like a name and a call sign. Uh, you can use that for maybe call sign, call routing or um, just to have a memory. I, I, I really don't use it. So uh, if anybody, anybody use that, anybody use a repeat or a call sign list? Uh, I do. Um, it's actually used for in D star. Okay. Uh, for different more. functions. We won't get into the details because it's a little more involved. Okay. So, so you can put like a UR call field, right? Right. Okay, so if you want to have a dedicated uh, uh, call sign list and you want to go like to uh, a link command, and uh, I, I guess I got way ahead of myself. If none, if you folks aren't registered with D Star, you need to register for any of this part of it, of it to work. So, and uh, and the UR call field, it is a little bit complicated, but basically it's it's a, a field of eight. If you go to my YouTube channel. W6 GPS and look at the video um, D star hangman. It explains that uh, how this all works, but basically it's a UR call field. Um, some people like to do it that way. Uh, I'm, I don't use it, so I don't particularly use it. All right. Now what's different in the 75 is there's a dedicated hotspot list. <clears throat> so, Sorry, two thirty, two thirty. Okay, so right up here, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and create one here. Uh, frequency is four three three dot one hundred, and also remember, folks, there is a there is a band plan for all this, so don't don't be jumping into the uh, satellites uh, frequencies uh, for your hotspot. Okay, and now there's two. This is really important. RPT one and RPT two. RPT one. If you use a a zone spot, any MMDVM, you have to put your call sign W six GPS. And what I do is I hit the space bar till it stops. When it stops, then I hit the backspace and I put B. Hit the tab button, put my call sign again, hit the space bar until it stops, 
and hit backspace and that's a G. That's for anything that uses Pi Star, MMDVM, everything out there except for open spot and we'll demonstrate open spot. You're going to have a frequency and this is really, really important. Everybody listening, shake your head if you're listening. Okay. With the MMDVM, you have, you absolutely have to put a offset of zero because the software in a Pi Star is looking for and like it's a repeater. It's being treated like a repeater. Everybody understand that? Shake your head, yes. Okay. Thank you, Chris. I see, no, you don't, or is that a 10 4? Thumbs up if that's a good 10 4. Okay. That is involved. This is not for a uh, not for an open spot. I'm going to get to that. Okay. All I'm right. Not listening. <laughs> okay. All right. So Zum. So I put in there Zum spot um, sub name. I'll just give it like it's a 440. Whatever. Okay. This is not integrated into your D star repeater list like the 74, and we're going to get to that. All right. So the next thing is I'm going to program for a a uh, open spot. I put it on a different frequency. You do not have to do anything with the with the shift, the offset, or anything. Over here, you put the word direct. Real simple. Direct. Okay. And I'll put 440 on there again. And I'll put open spot. I call it something else. So let me go to let me go to the radio right here. So if I hold the bottom and try, trust me, this is so difficult having to do this at a weird angle. When I when I open up the D star repeater list, first of all, you have to be in um, your VFO has to be in digital and it has to be in DR. If you do not get, if you cannot get to DR for any reason, probably you don't have a repeater list built because how can you have DR when you don't have any repeaters? But anyway, hold the down button right here. And instead of going through the repeater list like we did on the 74, we go to the hotspot list. We go right here. We go right here. And I could choose between, I can use the encoder or whatever. And then I hit enter. Okay, everybody got that? Chris, you got that, buddy? I know it's not talking back to you. I'm sorry. I'll turn. I'll turn the thing back on. So, hang on here just a second. Let me uh, let me do this. And just so you know, everyone has the capability to unmute themselves right now. So if you do have a, a question, and as long as we're respectful, just uh, feel free to ask it. All right. Just hang on a second, folks. We're only live. <laughs> Is all this you're doing going into the radio or your computer? My computer. Okay, you do all this in a computer, and then you transfer everything from the computer to the That's radio. That's correct. Do, uh, yeah. have to do the whole ball of wax. Yeah. Okay. So, hang on here. <clears throat> Just bear with me, folks. While he's doing that, I will mention you can do it on the radio, but it's kind of a very clunky. It's a lot easier to do it on the software. Well, that may very well be. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. You know, it's I'm dumb. I don't know. I don't know how to do this stuff. I have a question, if I may. Go ahead. On the sequences, I understand from four or five years ago when I did the the D74. I would, st I've, you know, and I've done it now. I've already got a lot of settings on my D75 I want to keep, you know, the way the, the different things, uh, the uh, whatever. I would go in and upload off the D75 into this program, and that brings the computer settings. And then I do what you're doing on the other things you want to add. And so when you download it, 
then you uh, are bringing what the, you brought with the computer Nine, to the one, phone and then six. download all the changes. Otherwise, you're going to lose the changes, I think, that you've got in now that you've Sure. Done. Is that sure. the sequence of events still? I would say so. Okay. What do you think, Kevin? Yes. Yeah, uh, if you don't save the file out to another file before you read the radio, you're going to lose it all. Okay. It will ask you to save it before you do it, though. Okay. Local well, I just have to reset the radio to all the things direct. you've already set Fine. up, you know, yeah, timeout yeah. timers and all the other stuff. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Can you, uh, First of all, can you guys hear this? Yeah, I did. One, yep. Two, yeah. Local. Okay, got it. Repeat. All right. So what I did here is I turned voice guidance on, and all I did is... One, two, local. CQ. Just gave that a quick, two, quick... Five. On the power is a two-step. The power button is, is two steps. So, like, if you turn the battery status on, it'll it'll just read out the battery status. If that's whatever's on the main screen, there, that's what it'll read out. Okay, so we're going back to the we're going back to the computer stuff. And uh, Chris, help me out help me out on this. Uh, you can you can navigate with the, your optical readers on on the programming software. Is that correct? Yep, I use RT systems, but it's pretty it's, much the same. Okay, all right. And Same again, kind of thing. you know, I'm not exposed to uh, your abilities of what you can do, so that's a, a good answer. You can, you, you could, your follow, you could follow me, pretty much. Yep. Okay. All right. So on the open spot, uh, we put a name, we put a sub name. Remember, open spot, direct, direct. Okay. On the frequencies, please adhere to the uh, recommended. Uh, band plan. Okay, so, um, okay, so uh, this is uh, on menu TXRX, the main menu. I've opened it up. Uh, you could turn on the bar antenna uh, or go to the antenna connector. I use the antenna connector. The bar antenna is probably only good for if you're right next to your radio station, so you can listen on HF. Remember, you can only activate HF on the on the B band. What was that? What was that menu there, Kevin? Uh, sorry, I let you down. Um, we were on audio voice nope. message. No, nope. transmit receive the page with a weather alert antenna connector. Oh, that's going to be towards the top there. Um, one hundred four. 104. All right. Uh, there's a TX inhibit. These are things I'm not adjusting. It's where your mic sensitivity. What number is that one there, Kevin? Uh, 112. 112. 112, okay. yeah. All right. Menu, nine, configuration. One, low, medium. There you go. Okay. Um, I'm just kind of going down here. We're not going to worry about CW. You can use Vox, like if you have a Bluetooth headset. Uh, that's another big discussion, discussion that we're going to not get into because it's just so many variables. But we're working our way down to, you, you can go to a recording file. And what's that number there? Recording 301. 301. <laughs> Yeah, you're jumping all over the menu here, so. All right, so you can actually turn a recording on and what band. We're not going to do anything about that. Kevin did a great demonstration. You could send a voice message. Uh, I'm not going into that. We're going to basic stuff. All right, so now we're at to uh, we're into the GPS menu. Okay. Okay. Six four four zero four. Basic settings. G off. We're going to turn the GPS on. GPS. Okay, so now the GPS is on. Uh, it's getting a fix. And what you can do here is um, once you get a fix, and it, and it just told me that the GPS was locked, but what you can do is you can actually uh, program a position. Kevin, why don't you tell them about how to do that? And I'll follow you. Okay. Just All tell right. me what. Uh, there's two ways you can do it. Uh, you can do it manually just by going to four. Oh, one, that's Menu basic four, settings. Four, zero, 
Scroll four, down to zero, my position. My position two. Use setting name. And you can actually get it again. Not my position three. N my name Q T H. All right. You manly enter here. Right. You can manly enter here or you can get out. Eight, let's nine, get back six, to the main, main one. Let's go down to function mark. Function. My position, latitude, north, three, four, degree, five, nine, point, nine, nine, then hit minutes, copy. longitude, west, zero, eight, up, copy, two, my then position, choose your position. One, name, that's where you blank. can save it directly from the GPS. Hit enter. Uh, yes, if you want to go to one, hit enter. Uh, tell okay. No, I'm sorry. My it has position, to be okay. Latitude, okay. North, All right. Four, degree, All right, so. Nine, point, nine, nine, minutes. Longitude, west, zero. All right, so that way you can you can enter a a fixed position. You can enter a fixed position, and then you could turn your GPS off to save some power. All right. Now, now we're getting to the good stuff. All right. Remember, we're we're working on a file that we haven't been saving, so I would occasionally save it up there. Now, this is real important. Everybody listening, real important. Whatever you use in here, sorry, whatever you use here, APRS, and that is a menu 500. Hold on. All right. Whatever you're going to put your call sign and a dash seven. You could choose a person or you could put Kenwood. But later on, we're going to tell you how this this gets transmitted to the uh, D Star network. It's not called DPRS. It's called Kenwood Sentence and or APRS Sentence, and we'll get to that. So, right there, you're going to put your call sign dash seven because that is uh, this proper SID for either a person or a walkie-talkie. Now then there's a down here at the bottom here which says transmit rate. Uh, I just put one to one and uh, you could put a message in here uh, like Don from chat uh, Nuga. Okay. And uh, what that what that is is when you beacon and and people look at your call sign and there's a little message there okay and you say what in the world is this rate well uncle bob berningo you know he wanted to conserve as much aprs space but one to four means every transmissions you would make then that would send that message out well I just have it sent out every time it beacons. So I don't think it's a I don't think it's a big deal. So all right, now be, beacon TX control. This is this one's real important. I don't know why they have it defaulted to one minute, but just to get you started, you're gonna set that to five. Turn turn off. Turn off DK algorithm and proportional pathing turn those off and what those are decay algorithm if you didn't move and you beaconed it would just eventually not beacon it would beacon every now and then and proportional pathing if you're not changing uh it just kind of keeps the hops uh, keeps the hops from going it's another way of just to conserve the aprs network i uncheck those and let's see Moving down here, so that's the TX control QSY information. So what happens here is is uh, if if you have these turned on QSY information and status, tone on and shift and offset. If if you're on APRS but then you're on a repeater, a local repeater, and you transmit that information, the guy can see that, see you, and hit. Uh, um, um, there, you there go to is list. A, thank you. Go to list and then just go to hit menu. 
you'll have tune and just hit tune and now tune to whatever that person had. Okay. Everybody kind of get that? You know, you have to be into APRS rule, but that's what that is. All right. And uh, we got smart beaconing. Okay. Smart beaconing. Uh, if you're walking or if you're driving in a car, you want to turn that on because as you change uh, vectors, elevation, speed, it, be it sends a beacon out. I just use the default in my car. If I'm not, if I'm not driving, I don't use smart beaconing because if you don't move, then it's going to be beaconing less. So then I would go back to manual beaconing. Okay. Uh, waypoint. Um, I just changed this to Kenwood just because of the AVMAP days uh, and output all. You can do filtered. We're not going to get into that because we basically want to get as much activity so you, so you know that this thing's working. And, and don't think that the APRS network, don't, don't think that the APRS network is like a phone system where uh, you're going to transmit or, it, you know, people could just send you messages. No, the system has to know where you are first, and then a message could be sent to you. So don't get that idea that it's just like a cell, cell phone network. So you have to be close to what they call an, an iGate, a DigiPeter iGate. You can have a DigiPeter um, without access to the internet, or you can have a DigiPeter with an iGate that gets it to the internet. That's what the I stands for, is the internet. Question when you're on that listing that you were working on, you turned off the listing of all the things you're adding and subtracting. You know, on the on the programming. Okay. You have those little check marks along the side. What does that do? Back in the software. Yeah. So those are just checked. Those are just checked for things that you want to open up. Oh, so if you uncheck it, it just about goes away. I see. I don't think you can uncheck it. No, okay, I just know what they indicated. Okay. Okay, hold on. Kevin, say again. Wow. It's just a graphic icon. Yeah, it's just a graphic icon. Okay. okay All thanks. right. All right. No problem. Okay. I it on or off. I didn't know what it was. Some kind of other designator. Okay. Oh. All right. All right. So then there's notification. Uh, for Just to get started, turn, just leave it on all. Now, special call. So if I put KI4LAX because Kevin's my special friend, and he he beacons, I will get a special tone to warn me that my special friend is is close by. Okay? Everybody understand that one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, APRS voice. I would check that. And what APRS voice is, let's say Kevin's uh, five miles behind me, and he makes a transmission, an APRS beacon. He makes an, he makes an APRS beacon. And I and it, it think of it as a tone squelch. So you don't want to hear all this beaconing stuff. And your wife doesn't want to hear all this beaconing stuff. But all of a sudden I hear a beacon that popped out. Well, that is somebody that has a voice alert turned on, and it's a it's a subaudible tone. It does not get passed through the APRS network or in hops. It's designated just for simplex so if i if all of a sudden i hear a little you know hear that little beep you know that packet i could go to my aprs uh, band uh and just make hey this is w6 gps on uh, voice alert you want to go to five two and then you then that person would acknowledge and then you can move off or it's just another way it's just another way of making a contact does that all make sense kind of is oh, that yeah. kind of like it lets you know somebody's nearby like a simplex yeah. It is nearby because because if uh, the APRS voice does not get passed through DigiPeters, it's only okay. It's so only very similar in a in a, a repeater. You hit R, and if you're getting the person, that means he's nearby. Right. You're, okay, very similar. Okay, except you don't have to do anything. Okay, and let's see. Um, packet filter. Uh, for right now, we just check all those. We just leave them checked. And what that is, is if you don't want to have the weather stations, you uncheck it, and then you have to go back there and check. Hey, Don, can you show your screen? Do you mind? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Sorry about that. 
Um, so uh, let's see, what where was I at? Okay, so if you right, so if you don't want weather stations um, or objects, if you uncheck those and then you turn filtered on, it will only pass the things that you check. And then if you want to, let's say you don't want to get a whole bunch of activity, you know, 100 miles away, you can actually turn on the uh, radius and, and that gets from there. Um, APR's voice. Um, so hang on just a second. Kevin, can you explain that one, APRS voice? Um, APRS voice, so I thought you just did. It, basically, it's, you put a tone on it with 100. Uh, it does it for you automatically. It kind of provides simplified means of putting that tone on it. But so if both people have that on, uh, it, it'll get through and you'll actually hear the packets and then you know that they're in close enough to get directly to you so you can talk to them. So you could actually put it like on call on 1.2 or whatever frequency you want. So once you talk to them and tell them to move over, then you can move over to that frequency. Or you could tune to them and just use the other frequency they're using at the time. Um, trying to think of how I could show you that in an easy way. Hey, caught me off guard there. Uh, basically, basically, when it's set up correctly, and I may have got my terms mixed up here, is the packets are muted until the packet that has uh, the APRS uh, tone on it opens up the audio. Correct. They both have to have it on for it to work. Okay. All right, moving on. Okay, you can put a phrase here. We're not going to do that, but you could put phrases in there to um, maybe tell people to email you or or uh, where you're at or meet up or something. It's just a phrase that when you get a when you get a beacon uh, or message request, it can answer back. So, like when you're driving and you shouldn't be texting and driving, something like that. All right. Okay, so now we're getting down to the D-Star, which is going to be the 600 series, I believe. Yes. All right. Oh, no. Oh. Come. Yeah. Oh. Uh, someone's <laughs> snoring? <laughs> Here we go. Here we go, everybody. Uh, one of our members sent this in. Uh, APRS voice, this function is to announce the call sign and information of the transmission source when an APRS signal is received. Access menu 575. So turn that on for a APRS voice function. So that's actually a voice. So my fault. Voice. So I got that one wrong. So. All right, we're going back to D star. All right, so. What, uh, that was menu 600, 600 right? 600, yes, the history. Oh, all right. So back to, back to the radio. We're going to go down to six ten, And it's going to be your call sign. And if you hit tab, you could put uh, like Don, your name. It's only, uh, I believe, four characters. It's only four characters, so you could put your name or TH75 or something. Okay, I'm not going to go into message. Now here's that important one. Um, the GPS information in frame. You gotta turn that one on. What's that number, Kevin? Uh, that's going to be actually do it faster in the menu. It's going to be under uh, GPS data, which is 630. You want to turn that on. Now, you see that right there, it's APRS sentence. 
You want to turn APRS sentence on. That's the next one down. You want to turn APRS sentence on. Now, remember we told you how important it was back in the menu 500 uh, for um, APRS. Whatever that information is, is going to go over the D-Star network. Okay. Now, just a couple caveats. Not all repeaters pass this information. Not all hotspots pass this information. You do have to configure your hotspot to pass the APRS sentence. And you say, well, what good is that? Well, uh, last week or two weeks ago, I went to uh, uh, Minneapolis to Portland, Oregon, uh, through Wyoming and Idaho. There's not a lot of APRS activity, not, not a lot of stations there. So what I was able to do was every time I made a, a transmission on D-Star, my position was forwarded to the APRS uh, server, and it showed up on APRS.fi. When I got um, when I got to okay, when uh, when I got to my um, uh, an AP, a APRS uh, Digipeter or iGate. Uh, it complemented it, so it actually it actually works together. Doesn't get things messed up. But you have to make you have to make um, both this. Uh, you have to make them the same. It will be the same. They have to both be the same. So uh, well, let me let me back up. Let me back up there. Let me correct myself. I have to take a break here, mentally break. But the APRS call sign information is being sent to the D-Star header to the APRS sentence. And so they 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 complement each other, okay? Everybody understand that? Got a question? We've seen some of this on the radio already, so when we upload it, we won't have to remember it because it'll already be there when we go into it on the programming from the down to the radio side, right? Kevin? Um, if I understand you correctly, uh, you're saying once you upload to the radio, it'll be on the radio. I would still oh, well, say I, I, we made, I think what Don is doing is we've already done this on his earlier instructions when we got the radio while we're waiting for the, you know, the RT systems or whoever. And so if it's already there, when we upload the radio first, what we're now entering is already there. We won't have to do right. it again. Is right. that correct? It's if you read it from the radio and it's already there, you'll get it. Right. But okay. but I'm 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 suggesting that you haven't programmed a radio. Right, right. I, so, I understand that. Okay. All right. So uh okay. Now that's gonna be uh um D V gateway. Now you're saying what in the world is that? Kevin, can you tell us about D V gateway? Okay, and what you Hang gateway on. uses what? the MMDV command that actually communicates directly through Bluetooth or uh, USB to uh, the main software that I know of. The only one I know of at the, this point is BlueDV that will con connect with it, and you can actually use it like a repeater, but you're just going doing it through Bluetooth or USB without the uh, RF. Have you got that? Have you got that set up at, at your place? Um. I can real quick. Okay. You mean Blue DV Connect? Yes, yeah, Blue DV Connect, Android phone. Will not work on an Apple phone. I'm, I have an Apple phone. I have a Mac computer. It won't work on there. Um, I'm sorry. I'm not the programmer. Um, it's a uh, Bluetooth classic. It's not uh, low, low energy Bluetooth. Yes. Um, but from what I understand, this, this needs a fast Bluetooth uh, solution and the uh, the the, uh, the the low energy Bluetooth uh, just doesn't cut it. At least that's the way it was explained to me. I could be totally wrong. So yeah, basically BLE cuts out a lot of the profiles and tries to save energy. And right. uh, SPP is not one of the ones that supports what you need. You need the serial pro profile. Um, so basically, you go into um, number one. You have to go in and turn your we're gonna do a Bluetooth with my phone, and you just uh, 
first of all, pair your go into your pairing mode, and you pair it. I guess most of you know how to pair it. Should I go through that or no? No, it's, it's too involved. Okay. All right. So, you, so get, you get you get you get it paired. Then you just go into your. I'm gonna get my phone here. Oops. Don't show you my password. <laughs> all right. Um. Hey, Kevin. Yeah. Just get it. Just get it going, and I'll, I'll car carry on. Okay. Are so you... I should have showed you that, but uh, if you notice up in the upper corner there, that little Bluetooth icon that will actually turn blue when you hit the off on. And then once you do that, go into your uh, D Star, go to your DV gateway, and just turn it into re reflector. Am I going too fast? No, oh, I, I don't know if I'm going too fast or not. Um, once you do that, you can basically back out of it and use it like a hotspot. Okay, back to me. Okay. So, so, so the, I mean, this is just a very basic overview, but you pair the phone, uh, you pair your phone or your tablet to the radio, you put it in a DV gateway mode, you've programmed your call sign in here. And then what you're able to do, like if you have an Android phone, you don't even need a hotspot. So you'll be able to go to reflectors and everything just by using the rate. The radio RF section is not even it's not even turned on. It's using the Bluetooth to send all the uh, UR call field information and also to um, uh, uh, encode the uh, voice on the vocoder. Everybody understand that? Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Okay. So we got your call. We got your call sign in there. And uh, we're going back down here to basic settings, DV gateway. So make sure you have your call sign in there. Uh, it says it, the default is, is uh, Kevin, is it, did you, did you have to change that to, um, uh, you put your in... screen up. You want to put your screen up? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, help me. Okay. Uh, what What was the question? RPT one. Did you have to change that to? Uh... No, those are both direct, just like okay. the open spot. Okay. And then there's a device name. You could change that. Uh, that's what your Bluetooth device. As you're pairing, it'll show up. Um, so, all right. So I'm just kind of clicking down on these. Okay. Display for for you just to start off. I would change the default, just turn it on and uh, backlit timer, just leave that at 10. But when you have it turned on, it'll stay on. You can have a brightness high. Uh, I, you know, I could perfectly read mine in the brightest sunlight. The, uh, the um, display is fantastic. So you can load, you can load up uh, your hello message. You could change that to your call yeah. sign or your name or something like that. Uh, bitmap, so if, if you want to have a custom screen, uh, you can load a, a custom screen there. And so, um, uh, let's see. Hey, Don, can you talk a little bit about how the different levels of backlight can uh, either lengthen or reduce? You know, sure, sure. All right, so, so on my, on my, on my battery, when I'm on my battery, uh, you folks, um, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to condition the battery. This has nothing to do with memory. Has nothing to do about doesn't have yeah. to do with memory or any of this stuff. And it's something that I've learned. You know, you've got to run the battery up, charge it all the way, and you got to run it all the way down. Uh, you could leave the radio on, and once it gets below a certain voltage. Um, I think it's around five volts. It disconnects from the radio. It's not going to ever drain to the very bottom. It's not like you're shortening it out to, you know, to deaden the battery. I've got but to it turn itself off. It's so so dead, and I've I've turned it on so it, the power doesn't go off. The meters, the light stays on, and listening to the weather station, so it's using as much as it can and goes dead quicker. But okay, uh, okay, let me fin let me finish. So. So I've been running five minute five minute intervals beaconing with a display fully fully uh, bright, 
and I get uh, eight hours, eight to nine hours uh, GPS on. So if I turn the GPS off, turn the display to the minimum, uh, just have the radio received, no GPS, it lasts 10 to 11 hours. Great. Great. Okay. So, so um, yes, if you're scanning and you got weather alert and you're washing the car and you're doing all these, all these things, yes, the battery is going to get used more and it's going to yeah. deplete quicker. Um, right now, the don't don't even don't even use the uh, battery indicator level as a reference because it's incorrect. Uh, they're they're working on it, yeah. and hopefully it'll be fixed. It'll be it'll be fixed soon uh, because it gives you a. I was driving with a car and I had voice guidance on, and the battery told me that um, it was at zero, and I still had four hours left. I just kept it on, so so don't use that that empty battery. Just wear the wear the wear the radio down till the battery quits I if you use it i turned everything on so it wears it down quicker while you're conditioning it you know it doesn't matter yeah well, i think i think to wear down if you have everything sort of turned off so to speak okay yeah so so anyway that's the battery life is is um it's subjective you know because um uh, i use my radio different than a lot of power users so Anyway, so you could program PF keys for certain certain things. Let me go back to my computer. You could program uh, PF keys. Um, uh, now, bat on this batteries battery, I turn the battery for me. Now it's not. This is just me. I turn the battery saver off, and I and um, back in the uh, the. Uh, Auto power off. I just turn it off, and then back up, back up there in the GPS menu, there is one more thing that I forgot. GPS settings is battery saver is auto. I just turn it off. Okay. You know, for right, you know, to just get things going. Because if 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 you put saver on, what it does is the GPS kind of goes to sleep, then it wakes up, and then it gets a little warm fix, and then it kind of goes back to sleep. Uh, it'll it'll save you some power, but for me, I just I just turn that I turn all the battery savers off. All right, so now so really we've got, just one of your conditioning. I just turn them off because I don't I don't I just turn them off because okay. I don't I just don't want the radio to go to sleep or or, or anything because I'll miss something. So we've we've pretty much got this got this thing uh, programmed. We're gonna do a save as, uh, and I, I already gave it a name, so I. Uh, I'm going to override what we've started off. So now here's my basic, here's my basic um, uh, file. So, uh, Kevin, have you got that? Have you got that thing going? What going? Oh, the terminal mode. I'm going to have to reboot my phone. It's okay. I'll it's take that as a no. No, not at the moment. Okay, so so uh, for me, just for this demonstration. You know, I've saved the file. I've uh, I've taken the, uh, I've taken my radio. I've got me an SD card in there. I I'm gonna take it off, take it out, turn the turn the radio off, and um, take the SD card out. I got it into my in my computer. And then what I'm going to do is I want to transfer the file. I want to tell you the structure of this SD card. This is normally you would just hook up a cable and and spit it out. Uh, I'm not going to do that for you right now, simply because uh, I can explain a few more things. So back to the computer. Uh, so if you put a card in there and you format it, it's going to say Kenwood. When you open that up. It's going to say THD 75. If you have a 74, all you have to do is copy the, um, the, the THD 74 folder with all the information. You can swap cards if you want to do that. But inside the, you've got capture, uh, GPS log. Capture is going to be like pictures. Uh, there is a way that you can capture screen capture. Uh, you have to have a, a special speaker mic. Um, GPS log, we didn't get into that. 
uh, QSL log. Uh, now recordings is, is going to be like if you recorded some QSOs, uh, some HF inf information, or just record people talking, you know, you can uh, up, bring those files up and listen to them. So in settings, this is where you have uh, data, and inside of data is where you, you would put your configuration file. So I could do a save as, save as, I've already saved it, but I save as, and then I'm going to go into, I'm going to go into um, Kenwood, go to settings. There's a repeater list. If you have a repeater list, you could, that's where it's going to be at. But data, open that up, and then I uh, save it. Hopefully, hopefully I save it. Okay, so I take out my SD card. Go back to the camera here. Go back to the SD card. Put it in. It only goes in one way. So don't force it in, but make sure that it, it clicks in there real good. Turn the radio on. All right. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go in here to, to the file. Sorry, this is, this is kind of wonky doing this. And I go in, import configuration data. And that's my file that I created. You hit it, it's loading, you hit okay. And it reboots in the configuration. All right, Don, I have it ready whenever you want to put that Okay. In. All right. So this is like, this is the basic. This is the basic um, setup, the basic um, programming uh, for the THD 75. Let's go back to me. Okay. So, so now. What size of memory card does it use, Don? 32 gigs. 32 gigs is the largest you can use. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to open it up to questions. Not everybody at one time. Are you ready, Kevin? I'm ready whenever you are. Okay, so what Kevin has done, he's paired his phone. He's downloaded the free software for um, Blue DV Connect. Uh, the guy in the Netherlands has done that. Uh, David, I believe is his name. Uh, PA7. Uh, Nobody knows it. Alan okay. Vick. Yep. So, Kevin, tell, tell them what you had to do. Okay. It was a uh, simple, um, I forgot one step. I forgot to tell you. I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now. In the menu, on the Which interface, menu? Which menu? Okay. Go back to uh, 900. Interface is zero. DB gateway is five. Just make sure that's on Bluetooth. I had it on USB, so it wasn't, it'll give me some issues. So make sure you use whatever method you're using. You got to make sure that matches. So, but once you do that, then um, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Can again? you see my radio? No. No. Um, radio display. There we go. Okay, a little better. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is on the phone, I'm going to hit that off on and just watch the radio. That'll let you know that you've that lead lets you know you have a good connection. So the next thing you do then after, from there on is you just use it like a normal hotspot. So you go to reflector, link to reflector. I'm going to use 18 alpha. And I'm hey, going Kevin, to try to Kevin, can I pause you for a second? Um, yeah. Go ahead, Mark. Before you before you turn it on, before you turn the app on, um, you have to go to the config and set your call sign. That was one of the things that confuses a lot of people. Okay, yes. Um, if you see if I can, sh uh, what would be okay. better? Let's see here. There you go. Yeah, the, the wrench. So hit the wrench, put your call sign in, and that's where he actually has his call sign in, the guy who wrote the software. So you have to replace his with yours. This is where you choose your Bluetooth that you have and uh, frequency you ignore because we're not going to use it. And then just go back up there and hit your on. 
And then once you do that, I'm going to go ahead and just like normal, you just go ahead and uh, reflector, link to reflector, choose it. And then when you hit the pop button, it links right up. And then go back and go to reflector. And this is one I always forget, use reflector. And then you can start talking like it's a normal hotspot. As you will notice, this is KI4LAX. You see it turns red, and it also um, it's in the GPS information. Yeah, the that's one thing. This one doesn't do at the moment. Just so you know, it will not transfer the GPS information out. So whether you have the GGA RMC or the APRS sentence, neither one will get out. But I was going to show you on top of the red. You notice that turns blue. That's letting you know that it's not using RF, it's using the Bluetooth to send the data. Is there any right. questions or? Well, I just I wanted also, I also most wanted to say that, that you can change the reflector within the app itself and you don't need to, to change the radio to use reflector. Once you've already in used reflector, um, you just, you can actually just disconnect, change the reflector, connect again, and the radio will use whatever reflector you selected. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, that's a good point. So for those of us who don't remember to actually link to and then use the reflector, that's a good way of doing it. Yeah. I usually hide it away somewhere on my phone, so it's hard to get to. But if you have your phone close by, as you can see, you can go in there and do it directly on the phone itself. Hang on, hang on just a second. Chris, have you done have you done this yet? No, I haven't. Um, but there is there is a program for Windows called Doozy. Okay. That I haven't used yet, but uh, I did find that. Okay, for doing but this you, with your you, Windows PC. Okay, um, well you can nav you can nav you have the ability to navigate to do this stuff. Yep. I'm, I'm, just I'm an iPhone. I'm an iPhone user though, so I'm going to have to get one of those BB Link. Uh, yeah. Devices. Okay. Okay. okay if you have so any challenges with the BB Link device, reach out to me. I can help you. I built three of them there. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, because I'm I don't solder, so all right. Is there just a burning question? So if you send stuff to Chris, Chris is Casey 7 cl I'd be interested if you'd post that on the blind analyst. Okay, say that again. Well, I would be interested if Chris gets that information on the on that. If Chris would post it to the blind hands list, that'd be really great. Yeah, who was sir? I didn't catch who was speaking. Who was offering to help with those with those BB Link? Uh, yeah, his name is Mark. Yeah. Uh, call sign is Kilo Six Echo Foxtrot. Okay, thanks a lot, Mark. That's great. Yeah, thank you. All right, I know that we've talked a whole lot. We actually didn't really show a lot of D Star stuff, but. Um, it, but I'm here to answer some questions if you have some questions. Uh, can I, I'm Robert, uh, NC5R, and I'd like to ask, make a quick comment and ask a question if I could, please. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I, I um, just wanted to say, first of all, that I'm a blind ham, and the, uh, guide, the voice guidance is fantastic on the THD 75 and I configured my radio all by hand doing all the things that you just uh, described because I didn't have any accessible programming software at the time. And I was able to use the voice guidance and successfully set up my open spot and all that stuff and have it working great with D star. But I set mine up before I realized that the 75 has that new open spot uh, list that you that you demonstrated. I set it up the way people used to set them up on the 74 where you would add your open spot as a repeater into the repeater list and then uh, make everything work that way. And mine is working just fine, set up the old way. But I was just wondering, is there any advantage to setting it up the new way in terms of functionality. I mean, I, I get that it's easier to set up, but since I've already done it and it's working great, I'm not sure if I necessarily want to tear it down and, and redo it just because there's that open, there's that hotspot 
database yeah. now that wasn't there in the in the 74. So I'm just wondering about that. Okay, hang on a sec. Uh, hang on a second, and I will uh, I will answer that question here. Um, let's see here. All right. If you use uh, both blind and sighted people, if you have it programmed, your hotspot programmed in the dedicated hotspot list, when you hit menu, menu 230, it goes right to that list. You don't have to hold the bottom arrow down. You don't have to navigate down to the uh, repeaters, the countries, the states. It goes right to your it goes right to your um goes right to your um i'll show you right here well i'll show most of you um but if you hit menu 230 it goes right to your hotspot list and that i think that's a big advantage uh big advantage because then all you have to do is scroll up and down to the uh to the hotspot that you want. Did that answer your question? Well, it does, but I've only got one hotspot, so I'm not, I don't need to select between different uh, hotspots. I've only got the open spot for pro and yeah. the way, the way that I have it set up now, the way I do it when, when I'm in uh, VFO a and, and it's, it's all connected up. Um, I just hold the up arrow and that takes me right to um, the, 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 the menu where I can, um, select different reflectors or connect to, to, um, uh, you know, the echo test or do any number of things that's in that particular menu. So I'm just going to think it through and I'll probably set it up, uh, the way you're right. talking about, just uh, see what, see what the differences are, but for a blind user, I'm not sure that it's going to make a lot of difference if you don't have multiple hotspots, unless I'm misunderstanding what you're saying. Right. If you have just one hot spot and you do menu two three zero, it goes right to that hot spot. You hit you hit enter and you're ready to go. Over. But don't you still have to access the 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 destination information? Oh so yeah. You can. Uh, yeah. You yeah. still so, have to do so that. I mean, but you're not you're not dedicating a VFO to it though, like you, like you're doing. Right. I think that's the difference. Probably you're, uh, whether you're dedicating a VFO to it or not. It worked well for the 74 because you only had one VFO that did one star, but on the 75, you have two. So it makes it a little easier, I think. But since you've actually worked around the challenge, um, I'm not sure that, that changing it for you would, would be that much of a benefit. Right. All right. No, but if I if I do want to change it, I can simply um, de delete the, the, the repeater that I've, the fake repeater that I've set up in the repeater list that I have working now and I could switch over to the to the hotspot method. And and that's probably what I'll do, but I was just curious. Thank you very much, uh, NC5. Question. Yeah. This is KC3WDG. This is Kev. Now you were talking about the GPS. You put in GPS. Is this, is this when you put this in, this, the radio will be a GPS? It'll act as a GPS unit? Is that what uh, that does? Yeah. Well, you can you can use it. You can put it in GPS. You could put it in uh, GPS mode, and you can actually mark waypoints like a GPS. You can navigate to them. It's not going to give you routing. It's going to give you a vector. Haven't demonstrated that. That's just that's just like. But you can mark waypoints, and you can also uh, activate fixed fixed locations so that you don't have to turn the GPS on. Oh. Oh. Okay. I don't have one of these yet, and I don't know when I'm going to get one. But yeah, what, I but have the a video am, on the, Facebook. The, yeah, the way I am, the way I am, if I get one, it'll be obsolete, and a new model will come along. <laughs> but uh, this is good information to know. All right, I've and got a uh, oh, go okay. ahead. Oh, um, on that open spot uh, or, or hot spot, uh, I was using the open spot, and in those days, of course. Uh, you had to program the open spot that would first go to the uh, your Wi-Fi in your house or whatever, and then I had to send it to my phone. I will still have to do that on the open spot side, won't I? And all I can yes. put, all I have to do in the yeah. radio is do the shortcut to get to the open spot. 
director. Right. Okay. Okay. Second, second quick question. Um, when I did my D74, I didn't, did, I guess what we're doing now, I'll backtrack, what we're doing now is using the Kenwood programming. Is that correct? Yes, Kenwood programming software. Now, did we have that with the D74? We did. Okay, I guess I didn't know that, and so I used the RT systems. There's nothing wrong with the RT systems. No, so pretty much the same on RT system, which I have now bought. Uh, the connector is fantastic with the adapters and all, but uh, uh, so I, I basically have the same issue. I can carry over all the, uh, you know, by basically copying and pasting, like you suggested on the um, RT systems, I guess, and not have to enter all that in. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, good. All right. Yeah. Thank Another you. question. Thank you very much. Your super job. You guys are amazing. So. I have a question and three. Yeah. Go ahead. The uh, charging cables that come with the radio, uh, are they a, a USB to C? And yeah. also, uh, is it a DC cable or uh, do you have to supply your own uh, DC charging cable? Okay. The, uh, there is no USB-C cable that comes with the box. There is a 12-volt charger, not a power supply, that you could charge the radio with. You can also charge a radio with a USB-C, um, as long as it's uh, more than two amps. Um, the USB-C will be a little bit longer time. The 12-volt the, um, volt uh charger will be a little bit shorter time and then of course the drop-in charger is the quickest um the quickest it, but it, you know i found it very convenient driving all over all over the country and when i felt like my radio was getting low i just uh plug it into the car usb port and and it charged so but um uh, I do want to make an introduction uh, to uh, one of my close uh, close friends here from Japan, uh, Hiroshi uh, Nakamura. Call sign is jo Juliet Hotel Four Oscar Whiskey Golf, and he works for Mother JVC Kenwood in Japan. And I uh, wanted to say a quick hello and uh, give and uh, let's uh, open the um, let's open the Zoom call up to uh, Mr. Nakamura. Hello, good morning from Japan. So, uh, uh, very few uh, people uh, uh, connecting to the uh, Zoom meeting uh, from Japan. Very few people uh, from Japan now. And uh, thanks for uh, uh, the helping us uh, uh, so uh, our activity. And uh, I'd like to say just hello uh, to everyone. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye, Hiroshi Nakamoto. Thank you for joining us. Anyway, he uh, he works there at uh, JVC Kenwood, and uh, he uh, he fields uh, uh, product information, and uh, um, I believe he does a lot of writing on the manuals. But uh, he joined us and and was monitoring. So, any any other questions that we can help you with? I, I hope uh, I I certainly would like to know if it, I'm not looking for a pat on the back, but if this was helpful. Um, uh, I sure would. I'd like to know. You can anytime if you need any help. Uh, you can email me at w6gps at yahoo.com. And all that all that I ask all that I ask you do is uh, exp, kind of explain uh, what kind of help you need, uh, and then I'll I'll try to get back to you. I'll try to do more uh, Zoom stuff like this where we get something uh, specific. And so, you know, this is our first time we've done this. That's the first time I've done it. You know, I've been scrambling for a couple of days trying to make make the equipment work. And that's what I wanted to do. So, uh, but but we're here, um, me and Kevin, we're going to be here. So if you oh, have any- your call sign again, Don? W6 Golf Papa Sierra, W6 GPS, Global Positioning System. And I live in Chattanooga. I'm good in QRZ.com. Okay. Uh, well, you, you were more than Frank. helpful. Well, you were awesome. This is a fantastic uh, effort. It's amazing. So thank you very, very much. Hey, and what's uh, the six call hey. doing on the East Coast, Don? I'm sorry? What's the six call doing on the East Coast? 
Well, I grew up in San Diego. <laughs> the guy that owned the call sign, uh, he surrendered it. He didn't renew it. And I was working for AvMap a long time ago, and I wanted something with GPS. And I said, look, this guy's from San Diego. And that's where I grew up. I grew up in San Diego. And I wanted a six call because, you know, it's just it's just so much cooler. I, my old call sign was WD4FSY, and that was a mouthful. I'm just, just ribbing you a little bit there, Don. Thank you so much for, for organizing yeah. this and getting the answers done. For the well, one more yeah. quick question. Uh, I hadn't bought in the uh, power cord, you know, that you, it's op optional to cut up everything. Can you use the cart, the same cord? It looks like it. That comes it's the with same the, as the uh, 74. Systems? It's the same. It's the same charging. It's a charger. It's not a power system. It's a charger. It's the same as the 74. But I've also got something that came with RT systems to hook it up. Is that the same thing to hook it into? It's got that's the a, adapter. That's a USB yeah, that's, cable. That's just a USB yeah. cable. You'll have to you have to get a charger for that. You know, like I mean, a little. Would that would that be okay to hook up to the computer with that? Yes. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. If, Mark, if the cable from RT is a USB cable, that'll work for both charging the radio as well as programming it with the B75. Yeah, because it allows power through USB C. Does it allow the power charging too off of it? That's correct. Okay, yeah, but then I don't need to buy one. It looked like a very nice adapter. So. Don't do not transmit. Do not transmit while using that cable. Though. Okay, I got all the warnings on that. So, but this is because awesome. You guys are amazing. So thank you. I'd like to make a quick comment, if I may. Um, you know, I was on uh, Facebook and I had contacted uh, Don and uh, Kevin, you know, just as a stretch to see if they would be kind enough to uh, take on a Zoom call like this. And, uh, you know, to my surprise, both of them, you know, had agreed to do this as a courtesy and share their passion and the hobby. So, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful that you took the time out of your busy schedules to do this. And, I know you're going to upload it, and if for those of you that are looking, you know, I believe it's Don's call sign basically on YouTube, W6 GPS. So if you get a chance, check out that YouTube channel and uh, enjoy. He has some pretty valuable content. Okay. Um, um, who, let's see. How can I do this? Uh, one at a time. This, this is not a pile up. Who has a 75 on order and has not received it? Hey. Dan three HBT. Oh yeah. Okay, one at a time. Dan three HBT. Okay. Next Wait. one. KC seven CKO, and I have okay. one order and I have. All right. Anybody okay. else? So just two of you have ordered but haven't received yet. Okay. WA one RTB um, has one on order but I've not received it yet. Okay, Steve. Thank you. Um, they have they have landed another hundreds of them last week. I don't know how the distribution. Uh, you know, I'm not privy to the distribution or who gets what. Um, so I would just say keep on checking with your your uh, dealers, and if and if you are not an experienced D74 owner and you're getting this uh, 75 cold turkey, uh, I am certainly here to help you. Uh, I think the next ham fest that I'm going to be going to is Dayton. If you go to Dayton, please uh, please come by and say hello. Uh, let's see. Um, I, my my work schedule has changed some now to where I work on. Uh, I'm semi retired, retired from the Air Force, uh, semi retired, and uh, I drive a I drive a van of people from Chattanooga to Nashville or to uh, Atlanta. And, and I just got this full-time position where I'll be driving on uh, Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. So um, uh, I certainly will be glad to help you folks, uh, whether you're a, a 75 or a 74 owner, or, or uh, you know, I'll be glad to help you. I can help you with the hotspots. Kevin's uh, very, we're, we're both, we're glad to help you. Uh, this is just a way that we can reach out uh, to uh help you not be frustrated. Um, uh, one of the most frustrating things uh, about my Kenwood experience was the first day I got a D74 and serial number four without a manual. It was, it just came out. 
they had a they had a couple they wanted me to kind of play around with it and um and i got frustrated it took me hours to kind of figure things out the main thing was is the a and the b and the fact that the b band does a whole lot different things than the a band so uh what i ask you folks do is is don't don't flame us because you're frustrated on the facebook page if you need help reach out to the community and say i'm confused about something and and make a posting uh you could certainly send me a private message just identify who you are and uh, kind of what the problem is and don't be afraid i mean th this thing i have talked i have talked to one guy and he was so upset he was cussing even when he was talking to me he was cussing me and he was upset and he just didn't understand the simplest strokes of a and b how to get to the push to talk from a to b and the fact is that the b uh b band does so much more stuff so we are here kevin and i are here the community on the facebook uh, we're here to help you um but it's not something you're going to learn in, in one day and uh and i i i certainly want to single out my blind folks that have uh really really shown uh the abilities of what they can do uh with their handicap and the fact is that the radio was designed so that uh blind folks can navigate and i even one time was driving just turned voice guidance on and navigated with it so Anyway, that's uh, that's kind of all I want to say. Um, say here, I'm, I'll be here for a few minutes if anybody has a question. I do appreciate uh, John, uh, who uh, scared me. He uh, he went to the ER last night thinking he had a heart attack, but turned out it was just muscular strain. So uh, yeah, your badge of courage. So I, I appreciate John putting this all together, and just you know, just remember, folks, this is a this is a hobby. And uh, we're 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 here to help you out. Um, I'm going to try to get my camera situated a little bit better to where you're not looking at the uh, menus, um, the menu button. Uh, but I I will say that if you ever I'm not I don't get paid for this, but this little box right here made everything possible. It's a um, Aussie O S E E, and it's called a Ghost Stream. And you can put four cameras. You can roll video. Uh, you could do, you could do, you could switch, you could do things like this, and it's it's less than three hundred dollars. Wow! And and um, and uh, Greg, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna put this to YouTube. I'll just have to figure out how to get it from John. I may have to edit it down. Um, so anyway, um, 